Sickness has never been the will of God, especially in the life of the believer. But being healed from sickness is and has always been. In this lesson entitled The Raising of Lazarus, I'm going to show you why I said so. Union Gospel, there are notes for this lesson. I'll leave a link in the description below and in the comment section. Click that link, get your notes and your Sunday School books. For the Union Gospel Press, Sunday School is now in session. Join me. Let's go. Teaching the Word of God in the spirit of excellence. Join Elder Riley Jones with our Sunday School lesson. Building and equipping the children of God. Grab your Bibles, grab your notes. Get your lessons and get ready. Now let's go. Sunday school is now in session. And yes, it is. Just like that, Sunday school is now in session. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Sunday School Lesson as taught by Pastor Rodney Jones. I'm the pastor of the New Nation Anointed Ministries Church of God in Christ. And we're located 1700 West 87th Street in the city of Chicago. The zip code is 60620. Ladies and gentlemen, if this is your first time, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. You can also drop me an email to Rodney Jones Sunday School at gmail.com. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up, that like button, hit the subscribe to this channel, and hit that bell notification. It's a free subscription, and the purpose of the subscription is so that YouTube will notify you each week. Bing! Brother Jones just uploaded another lesson. Healing has always been uh, the will of God. As a matter of fact, Jesus has and had a ministry of healing. He went about teaching, preaching, and healing. He healed everyone that was sick. So don't ever let anyone tell you that sickness is the will of God concerning your life, especially if you are a believer. Today we're dealing with the raising of Lazarus. We're in Luke's or John's gospel, the 11th chapter, verses 38 through 44. Today's date for discussion is March 17, 2024. And yes, this is the Union Gospel Press. Jesus was given information that his friend, the one whom he loved, had died. And Jesus makes a journey for the purpose of raising his friend, Lazarus, from death. I need you to also understand that in this lesson, he said that I'm going to do this so that the Son of God may be glorified through the Father, which tells me that healing brings glory to Jesus and God. Let's get into the introduction of this lesson, and then we're going to see what we can do. And Father, we bless your holy name and we glorify you. We thank you for this opportunity. We pray that something is said that will bring edification, knowledge, and understanding to your body. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the lesson. You all ready? And here we go. So the introduction here. So number one, the context lets us know that Jesus arrives in Bethany after the death of Lazarus setting the stage for the miraculous event to come. What is that miraculous event? It would be the fact that he would raise Lazarus from the dead. So the Gospel of John, his account of Lazarus' resurrection is a powerful demonstration of Jesus' divinity and the fulfillment of prophecy. Let's look at the significance. This miracle serves as a foreshadowing of Jesus' own resurrection and it offers hope to believers in the face of death because he told her, I am the resurrection. And the purpose is the raising of Lazarus serves to strengthen the faith of Jesus' disciples and to reveal his power, ladies and gentlemen, right there, over death. Let's go. Crumble down. Jesus, therefore, again groaning 
again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Again, he came to the grave groaning. So it's been four days. Let me do this right here. It's been four days since the death of his friend Lazarus. And John first mentions that Jesus was sick, or John says that Lazarus was sick, forgive me, in John 11 and 1. The Bible lets us know that Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and their brother, John 11 and 5. When Lazarus took sick, his sisters sent word to Jesus that he whom you love is sick, John 11 and 3. Interesting how they said, he whom you love. And Jesus heard it, and he said that this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. He said that the Son of God might be glorified thereby, which is verses number four. Interesting that the purpose of this is so that Jesus could be glorified. When is he going to be glorified? When he raises Lazarus from the dead. And Jesus would never do anything that is against God. So if sickness was God's will, Jesus never would have raised Lazarus from the dead or from sickness. When Jesus heard the news, the Bible lets us know that he abode yet still a couple of more days in the same place. He said that our friend Lazarus is sick and I'm going to wake him up. Oh, come on now, because saints don't die, they sleep. So Jesus finally makes it to the grave of Lazarus. But before he made it, uh, he was met by Martha outside of the town in verses number 30. And Martha left and went and got her sister Mary. And there was a conversation that was going on between uh, them. The Bible said that Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, he cometh to the grave. The word groaning means agitation of the mind as grief. It means to be greatly moved or even agitated. And it also deals with anger. This is the second time that Jesus groaned within himself. The Bible said again. He says he groaned again. Did y'all see that word right there? So this is not the first time. This is the second one. He first groaned when he saw Mary and the others weeping in verses number 33. And not only did he groan, but the Bible said that he was troubled in verse number 33. So the question then is asked, why did he groan? That's the question I want to ask you all. Why did he groan? What is your answer? I welcome all of y'all's answers in uh, the chat box below. He groaned. He groaned. And those of you who want to be able to get your notes for this lesson, just take your phone, put it on camera, not video, put it on camera, point it at that QR code right there. Something will show up. Touch that little thing that shows up. It'll take you to where all of my notes are, and you can type in the particular note that you want. Let's get back to this. He groaned. He groaned. Let's see. Let me get back to the verses here, and let's see what we can go on from there. Verses number 39 and 40, Jesus says, take me. Now, he ain't finna say, uh, he says, take ye away, I'm sorry, the stone. Martha, remember her? Oh, Martha. The sister of him, now what keeps pointing up is dead. The sister of him that was dead, the word dead is keep coming to keep on showing up because he's trying. John is pointing the picture that Lazarus is dead because that's what the people, how they view it, him as dead. Said unto him, Lord, by this time he what? He stinketh. The reason why, because he's been dead four days. He's passed the three days of expectation now. And I'll tell you why I said that. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, let me put this right here. If you would believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. 
Now, what is the glory of God? Healing. Life. Restoration. He says, didn't I tell you that if you believe, if you wouldest believe, thou shouldest see. I need somebody to type, if I believe, I'll see. If I believe, I will see. If I believe, I will see. That's, that's an interesting statement that he would say. I told you that if you believe, then you would see the glory of God, which means if you don't believe, you cannot see God's glory. So the question is, why don't we see the glory of God through healing, through miracles, through raising of the dead, through coming up out of sick beds? It's really, it appears to be that we don't believe. Mm. Why aren't there miracles happening? Oh, they're still happening. Maybe not where we are because we don't believe. We've gotten so focused on not believing. I think it was Donald Lawrence said in this song or in whatever the, whatever's going on, he said, we have trained our eyes or ourselves not to believe what we say. And so we have shifted from believing in God and we've entered into positive speaking. Oh, this year is going to be my year. This year, I'm going to be successful. But you have not shifted. You've not changed nothing. You're still doing the same thing. Your trust and your focus is still in things and not in God. No wonder we're not seeing the glory and the miracles of God because we don't believe. Believe what? Believe in him. Believe in his word. I'm going to keep on moving. He says believe. But then I tell you. That if you believe, uh, then uh, you're going to see, you're going to see uh, this miracle. So at this point, Jesus is the only one that knows what's about to happen. Don't nobody else know what's getting ready to happen <laughs> but Jesus. He's about to raise Lazarus from the dead as he told her that he will live in verses number 23. Jesus told his disciples, I uh, may awake him out of sleep or raise him from the dead in verses number 11. He said, that's why I'm going there to get him out of his sleep or awake him out of his dead. His instructions were to take away the stone, yet he didn't need it to be removed. Jesus could have left the stone and raised Lazarus while he was in the stone and caused Lazarus to walk right through the stone. Yet he instructs them to do something before he performs <laughs> this miracle. <laughs> Sometimes Jesus used men while performing miracles with the 5,000 men besides women in John 6. Or he told the man to go wash himself in the pool of Siloam or John 9, 7 through 11. Sometimes he requires us to do things for these miracles and sometimes he just does them. Because according to custom, their belief that after three days, the person is not going to rise now because their spirit doesn't return. I love that. And as a matter of fact, Jesus waits and he goes the fourth day to even disapprove their belief that the spirit comes back within three. Jesus says, I'm going to wait an extra day just to show you that his spirit didn't just like lack around and then just decide to come in. Number two, customarily, they're normally buried the same day anyhow, or at least that's what we find out in Acts the fifth chapter. Verses 5, verses 6, and verses 10. Because they believed that the spirits returned, and therefore Jesus said, I'm going to wait that extra day. He said, then I tell you that if you believe, which means to have faith and in trust, you will see the glory of God, the splendor of God, the honor of God, and the praise of God. Because Jesus said that the purpose of this was so that the glory of God could be demonstrated in verses number four, he also stated that it was so that the son of God might be glorified thereby in verses number four as well. So you're about to see the manifestation of who I am, but I need you to believe. Come on, somebody need to type God, I believe in your son. Because one of the main reasons for this taking place is so that they can believe that Jesus is the son of God and that he was sent by God. Because if they believe in him, he is 
the resurrection. We've been trying and having our belief system in the wrong things. Fly, let's look at the command to roll the stone away. His instructions. Jesus commands the people to remove the stone from the entrance of Lazarus' tomb, signaling the imminent miracle. Point number two, let's look at the obstacles and doubts. The stone represents the physical and emotional barriers that prevent belief in the resurrection, challenging the faith of those present because that stone is something, that large object that is in the way. He says, take away the stone. And Mary or Martha says, he did. And he's thinking by now, he's been dead for four days. That stone is obstacles that represents uh, doubt. Because of the stone in our way, we tend to doubt God. Then we tend to think that it is too late. Let's look at the faith in action. The act of rolling away the stone, it requires trust and obedience, demonstrating the importance of active participation in God's miracles. I'm going to keep on moving from there. Fly, I'll holler at you later. Bye-bye. Let's look at the grief and loss. Point number one, Martha and Mary mourned the death of their brother Lazarus, which they experienced a deep sorrow and despair. Here's the one I want to focus on right here. Martha's emotions cause doubt and even wonder, why are you moving the stone? My brother has been dead for four days and he stinks. That's what that almost looked like a face right there. Yeah, he stinks. Why are we moving this particular thing? Let's go to the next verse. Yes, verses number 41 and 42. He says, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead, the dead. I keep telling you, he keeps mentioning the dead. The dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father. I thank thee that thou hast heard, hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, uh, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. This, now, he's not really praying as we would call a prayer. But he's actually, if we call it a prayer, it's the prayer of thanksgiving. He is now speaking unto his father, thanking him. Let's look. So this would be one of the first times that Jesus does a miracle in this specific type of order. After Martha was not successful in stopping Jesus, the people moved the stone. And Jesus didn't need them to move the stone, but he still instructed them to do so. Now, Jesus said that he always do the things that pleases his father in John 8 and 29. The Bible states that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. First John 5, 14 through 15. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus may mention that it is God's will that this is done. Why? Because Jesus is there doing it and he would never do anything against God. If healing is the will of God, then John, 1 John 5 and 14 says that if we ask him anything according to his will, he hears us. If he hears us, we have the petition. Why aren't we healed? Never be afraid to ask God for what is right for the people of God to ask for. Scripture lets us know with his stripes, we are healed. Come on, somebody. There was not one person in Scripture that Jesus did not heal. He healed those that were possessed of devils, those that had demonic forces and influences in their lives, those that were paralyzed, those that were blind, those who could not hear, those that could not walk. He even healed those that was dead. Lazarus is not the only one that he rose from the dead. And Jesus is about to do something that is according to his father's will. I'm staying there for a moment on purpose. Because I need somebody to be encouraged and to understand. Yes, you may be sick. Yes, because the body uh, goes through affliction. And yes, no, all sicknesses does not come directly from the devil. 
But all sicknesses is the result of sin in the Garden of Eden. The purpose that we have sickness is because of sin itself. But that doesn't mean that the person who is now afflicted committed any sin. And it doesn't always mean that the devil afflicted us. He's not that powerful. He's not everywhere at the same time. Only God is omnipresent. He said, Father, I thank you. I'm grateful and I'm thankful to you because you have heard me. You've listened to me with attention because God has always listened to his son because the son has always done his will. He said, I knew that you hear me always. Not only did the father hear the son, but he knew that he always hears him. Jesus was able to stand there with confidence that God always heard him and is hearing him now. Hmm. Come on now. Not only that, thank you, Holy Spirit, but God is getting ready to hear him when he gets ready to raise Lazarus from the dead because it's his will. He says, but because of the people which stand by, I said it. He's thanking the father publicly so that the people can see who he is talking to. Jesus is letting them know of the connection that he has with his father. Once he finishes speaking to the father publicly, he will proceed to do this miracle. At this point, all eyes are upon him for what he is about to do. So he openly says, father, now they understand that God is his father. And when this takes place, the people will see that God sent him and hears him. Oh, it's about to get good right now. I'm going to keep on going and close this in a minute. Let's look at that. Or let's look at the raising. When he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, do one thing. Come forth. And he that, there it is again, was dead, came forth. Watch this. He came forth. Ladies and gentlemen, how did he come forth? He came forth bound, hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Watch what happens. Jesus said, Unto them has to be the people that are standing by. Loose him and let him go. That's what Jesus said. Loose him and let him go. Once Jesus has finished thanking the Father, he cries with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. At this time, he has been dead for four days and stinking. The Jews, according to history, thought that the spirit returned in three days. Jesus waits that extra day. Jesus walks up to a grave and understands that he's going to raise this man from the dead, from the grave. I need the people of God to be assured that regardless of how stinking your situation is, how dead your issue is, Jesus can come and undie your situation. <laughs> Type that in bold Caps, Jesus can undie my situation. <laughs> Something was stinking. Ah, right, it's time for him to work. Oh, he do his great work when our lives have been messed up so until it's stinking, till people got to move the stone away. Come on now. Jesus did what only God can do by performing a miracle and he instructs remove his grave clothes because he came forth understand any and everything is subject to the will of the spoken word of God regardless of your family situation your job situation your marital situation your church situation your physical and emotional situation God can undie any circumstance just because you I need you to see this beloved Beloved, that Lazarus has been dead for four days. 
which means it makes no difference how long we have been in the circumstance. I don't care if we've been married for 14 years and for 13 years that marriage has been dead and stinking. He can come in and undie your stinking marriage. He can undie the difference between families, sons and daughters, husbands and wives. He can undo an, uh, that what we call church hurt or whatever the case may be. His final instructions to the people was lose him and let him go. Because you can't be dead in my presence. Oh, MG, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to stop right there. I do have an announcement that I need to make. Let me do this right here. Let me move that over because I will be in, uh, where am I going to be? Uh, yes, I'm going to be in Houston, Texas. When am I going to be in Houston, Texas? Uh, as soon as I get this thing, yeah. I'm going to be in Houston, Texas right there. Yeah, that's the one right there. Let me put this up there so you can see that. I will be in Houston, Texas. There it is, April 20th, 2024, at the Meadowbrook Baptist Church. Yes, I will be there. I will be doing a Sunday school conference, training and teaching session, Q&A sessions. There is the information that you can text and or call. If you would like me to come to your state, your city, to do a Sunday school conference, shoot me an email, Rodney Jones, Sunday school, gmail.com. My anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, there it is right there. Five years of my anniversary will be April 14th. I would love for you all to show up at my anniversary. It would be an honor. Get on them trains, them planes, and automobiles. Come on now. And lastly, if you want to support this ministry, I thank you for your support. I got a card today from Sister Charles. It blessed my heart on today. Thank you for the card. Listen, you can send me emails or I love cards. Uh, you can have something in the card. That's a blessing. Those are called flowers. If not, just say thanks or something. That touches my heart. But I don't do it for things. I do it because it's a part of my ministry. And there it is right there if you would like to support this channel. And lastly, if you want your notes, make sure right there. Do me a favor. Like, subscribe, and share this lesson. Make sure you make some comments below. And remember my motto. Teaching the word of God in the spirit of excellence. God bless the people of God. And thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe to my granddad's channel.